So coordinate geometry, or sometimes known as Cartesian geometry, uh, named after its uh, well creator, René Descartes. Distance formula would be one of the first formulas we, we learnt. Um, just to refresh your memory, there it is. Square root of x2 minus x1 all squared. Basically, it's Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, quick little example. Just to point out that, yeah, okay, whilst I've gone 5 minus 3 and then 3 plus 1, and I know a lot of teachers, they try and drum it into you in junior school that, you know, make sure you, you match up which one's the x1, which one's the y1. When you think about it, it doesn't really matter because you're squaring it anyway. So as long as your x is with the x and your y is with the y, you'll be right. Because if I had that the other way around, instead of 5 minus 3, I'd have 3 minus 5. But if I square it, it's still 4. So the actual order I put it in doesn't matter. And what do we get? We end up with 2 root 5. And so basically, as I say, what we're doing is finding the length of the hypotenuse. If we were to draw two points together on the number plane, you could create a right angle triangle and you're finding the length of the hypotenuse. Uh, midpoint, that's the other pretty common formula we see. And again, with midpoint, it doesn't matter. Whilst we always say x1 plus x2, but you can add it in any order. So again, as long as the x is with the x's and the y's with the y's, we're right. So if we find the midpoint of 3, 4, and minus 2, 1, um, again, I, I could have gone, instead of 3 minus 2, I could easily have gone minus 2 plus 3. It's going to give me the same answer. So x is with the x, the y's with the y's. And of course, what we're doing with midpoint, as the name suggests, we're finding the middle point and the middle of two things we could think of as the average. And that's what you're really doing. You're finding the average of the coordinates. So x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. Hopefully they're quite familiar to you. Division of an interval. So that's where pretty much where two units stops. They stop at midpoint. But an extension, we say, well, why should we be restricted to chopping up a line in half? We could, we, surely we could break it up in any ratio we like. So this idea of division of an interval is extension only. You won't see this sort of question in a two-unit paper. So all right, here's an interval, x, y. Let's show you what we mean when we say division of interval. I could put a point anywhere, and there it is, a. And I could say that is dividing x, y up into a certain ratio. So if I say a is dividing it internally in the ratio m to n. Now, the way you write the interval is important because the ratio will be in the corresponding order. So I've called this interval x, y. So the ratio is m to m. So there's m parts between x to a and there's n parts between y and a. If I wanted to name the line yx, then I'd have to say the ratio is n to m. So that way when we're reading the question, we know exactly where to place the point. We know where the, it divides it up. Uh, we can also have an external division. Because whilst we're talking about an interval, an interval, of course, is a piece of a line. So there's no reason why we couldn't put that point A outside of xy on the line. And that's what we call an external division. And again, the naming of the line is important. So a to x would be m parts, a to y would be n parts. And clearly for this particular one, m would be a bigger number than n. So let's just have a look at some questions that have come over the years. So internal division, from the 2003 paper, they asked this question, a uh, simple one, just okay. Find where P is. Where did we put this point that divides it internally in the ratio 1 to 3? Now, some books have formulas. I don't know what the formula is, I'll be honest with you, because I've never used it. Because I think of it more of a, a visual thing. This is how I do it. I'll, I'll write down the endpoints of the interval in the same order that they mentioned. So, okay, minus 3, 4, 5, 6. Then, underneath it, I'll write down the ratio again in the same order. 1 to 3. And I'll just draw myself a cross. And I basically I multiply along the crosses. So to get it up, I set it up. It's going to be a coordinate. I draw in vinculums. The bottom of the fraction, I add the two numbers in the ratio together. So 1 and 3 makes 4. So I know all up there's four parts, basically. So that goes on the bottom of the fraction. And then as I say, to get the x values, 
I multiply along the crosses and so I get three lots of negative three and one lot of five. And then you get the y values, I do exactly the same thing, I multiply along the crosses, three lots of four, one lot of six. And tidying that all up, I end up with the points, well that can simplify, there it is, minus one, nine on two would be the point that, that does it. Now I'm sure if some of you do know the formula and you've memorised it, you'll see it does exactly the same thing. It's just that I'm not writing down a long formula, I'm just drawing a picture if you like. Okay, so that's how I would do an internal division. An external division, so this one came from the next year, 2004, basically the same question, but now they're saying divide it externally in the ratio instead of internally. So I need a point. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Okay, so I'll write down the two points. I'll write down the ratio, but an external ratio is a negative ratio. So when they say externally in the ratio 5 to 2, Another way of saying that is it's in the ratio of negative 5 to 2. So I make one of the numbers negative, because just like a fraction, it doesn't matter which one, whether it's the numerator or the denominator you make negative, you just make one of them negative. I tend to make the first one because it's a bit easier to put in the ratio at the front rather than in the second one. But I could have just as easily made that 5 to negative 2. Okay, so draw my crosses and now do exactly the same as I did with the other one. So add them together, negative 5 and 2 gives me negative 3 on the bottom of the fraction. To get the x value, multiply along, 2 times 3, negative 5 times 9. To get the y value, 2 times negative 1, negative 5 times 2. And yes, that will tidy up. I get my point 13, 4. Yeah. So basically, exactly the same way of doing it, just when it's an external make one of the numbers in the ratio negative. All right, here was a variation on the question. In 2005, they actually gave us the answer, but they wanted us to find one of the endpoints. So B was the missing point that we had to find. So a couple of ways I could approach it. First is to do it like I did with the other ones, where I write them down, but the second point I've written it down as XY, and it's in the ratio 2 to 3. Now the difference here is I know the answer. So I know that the x value of the answer is, uh, where is it, there it is, is 1. So 1 will equal, bottom of the fraction, add them together, I get 5. Multiply along the crosses, 3 times negative 1 plus 2 times x. And I then get an equation which will allow me to find the x coordinate of the point I'm looking for. And eventually, where are we, there we go. So I know the x coordinate is 4. I do the same thing with the y values. So the answer for the y value is 4. Uh, so that's going to be, well, 5 again is on the bottom of the fraction. Multiply along the crosses, 3 times 8, 2 times y, and we'll solve that little equation. And I end up with y is negative 2. So I now know that b is the point 4, negative 2. So that's one way I could do it. Another way I could do it is actually think about what the question is saying. Draw myself a little picture. So we've got these two points, A, B, and it says P divides A, B internally in the ratio 2 to 3. So that means I'm going to place P such there is two parts here and three parts here. Well, I could rewrite the question now because B is the point I want to find. And I could say, well, B divides A, P externally in the ratio, what's it going to be, uh, 5 to 3. So I could rewrite the question and then just do that question. So, okay, now my endpoints are minus 1, 8 and 1, 4. It's going to be in the ratio minus 5 to 3 because I've made an external. And let's just set up our answer. Bottom of the fraction, minus 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Multiply along the crosses, 3 times negative 1 and negative 5 times 1 for the x value. And for the y value, 3 times 8, negative 5 times 4. Tidying that up, sure enough, we get the same answer, 4, negative 2. So there's an alternative way we could have tackled that question. Here's another type of question where this time what they want us to find out is the ratio. They've given us all the points. What is the ratio? Well, again, we can set it up the same as normal. 
So there's A and there's B. This time I don't know the ratio, but they've told me it's K to 1. They've also told me it's external, so I'll make it minus K to 1. And they've told us the answer. Now it doesn't matter whether I use the X values or the Y values for this. If they've set up the question correctly, it should work out the same both ways. So one would hope in the HSC it has been set up correctly. I've used the X values. The answer is negative 3. So the bottom of the fraction is minus K plus 1. Uh, multiply along the crosses, so I get 6 times, uh, times plus uh, 0 times negative K, which is of course 0. And I end up getting my value for K. So there it is, K is 3. So I now know that P divides AB externally in the ratio 3 to 1. Alrighty, so 5a, uh, there's a few questions there on midpoint and distance and what have you, but I suppose it's the, the division of the intervals what we're probably more interested in at this stage.